Hello and welcome to My Tiny Bottles, the project where I'm exploring my grandmother's legacy of miniature liquor bottles one tiny bottle at a time. I'm your host, Tammy Coxon. Before now, what I knew about Ouzo could be contained in a small glass of milk-colored licorice-flavored liquid from Greece, which is exactly what I knew about Ouzo. Tiny bottle number 20 is Butari Ouzo from Greece, and that is not at all how you would imagine that the brand name printed on the label would be written in English. But thanks to an amazing friend, thanks Marguerite, and Google Translate, once I'd figured that out, it got a lot easier to find the bottle's story. And as is often the case with these tiny bottles, the story I found is much more interesting than I ever expected. Butari Winery was founded by Ionis Butaris in 1879, then passed on to his son Stelios, and eventually taken over by his sons Constantinos and Yanis. Constantinos still runs the Butari company today, which now has six wineries across the Greek Isles. Giannis is the more famous of the two brothers. His is a most extraordinary life, which is documented in his biography, 60 Years of Harvest. In 2019, he finished a nine-year term as mayor of Thessaloniki, where, as an unconventional, tattoo-clad, recovering alcoholic, he was named best mayor in the world in 2012. Along with his brother, he helped pioneer wine tourism. He drove a transformation in production, from bulk and cheap wines to estate-made quality wines that made the Nassau region one of the best-known wine regions in Greece. And in 1997, he split with his brother and established his own wine company, Kyrianis. Today, at age 80, he is head of the Holocaust Museum of Greece, which is a project that he initiated while he was mayor. Researching this bottle, I spent a delighted few hours reading Greek articles in translation about him and watching his really amazing TED Talk, which you should totally watch and which I have linked to in the episode description. I did also learn a little bit about Ouzo. Ouzo is a Greek distilled spirit. It starts with a neutral spirit base of 96% ethyl alcohol. Anise is added to that, along with other botanicals like star anise, fennel, cardamom, or cinnamon. The mix is distilled again, and the result is an 80% ABV liquid that tastes strongly of black licorice. The Greeks call this ouzo yeast, not because any yeast is involved, but because it's the starter for ouzo production, like yeast is for bread. For the best ouzo, this ouzo yeast is diluted with water down to its final ABV, which is between 37.5 and 50%. You can't make it any lower ABV than that because the compound responsible for that licorice flavor, anethol, is soluble in alcohol at or above that level, but not below. This is why it turns that milky white when you serve it with water. This effect called luching is also what gives absinthe its color-changing qualities. Producers who want to make cheaper ouzo, they'll just use a little bit of that ouzo yeast, and then they'll combine it with neutral spirits to which they've just added anethol directly instead of distilling it in. Some makers will add sugar before dilution, but even ouzo without added sweeteners is still going to taste sweet because the anethol itself is 13 times sweeter than sugar. Didn't know that. I have no idea what the quality level of my tiny bottle is. With the exception of Greek dry aperitif written at the very top, every word on this label is in Greek. Which leads me to think maybe someone actually brought this one from Greece for grandma. The dry, though, implies that it probably doesn't have much in the way of added sweeteners. I also have no idea how to date this bottle. In the 1960s, Butari was the best-selling ouzo in Greece, and it made up 80% of the company's sales. But as the two brothers took over, and the company became better known for the quality of their wines, ouzo kind of became a distraction. And Giannis, who hated the stuff anyway, insisted that they stop production to focus on the wine. Constantinos must have started making ouzo again at some point, uh, because there is a Butari ouzo sold today. But the current bottle just looks entirely different than this one. I was able to find a vintage bottle from the 1970s with a similar vibe, so that's my guess for this one, especially since it is one of the most dust-covered of the bottles I've unboxed so far. Greece is on my bucket list, so I am hoping that I will be able to bring this back to its homeland and taste it with someone there. Now, seriously, go watch that TEDx talk. It's in Greek, but if you turn on the subtitles and watch it at one and a half speed, it's a pretty good pace for reading. Then drop a comment below to tell me what you thought about it, or leave one on mytinybottles.com or at mytinybottles on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. Cheers.